down on Capitol Hill with Republicans in the House refusing to sign off on a two-month extension of the payroll tax cut backed by the White House and a bipartisan vote in the Senate, 89 votes in the Senate. Democrats are demanding that Republicans get on board before taxes go up on 160 million Americans on January 1st. Republican House leaders are also catching heat from their GOP colleagues in the Senate. So, how can this get wrapped with just days to go? Joining me now, hopefully with all the answers, Republican Majority Leader Eric Cantor. Uh, Mr. Leader, thank you for joining me. Let's start uh, with a, a Wall Street Journal opinion piece that my guess is you've seen, but I want to read you just a portion of it. Uh, they write, and this is a Wall Street Journal, a conservative opinion page. At this stage, Republicans would do best to cut their losses and find a way to extend the payroll holiday quickly. The alternative is more chaotic retreat and the return of all democratic rule. What say you to that? Well, what say I to that, Chris, is we're here in Washington. Speaker Boehner is here. We have uh, members here in Washington ready to go to work. And the dispute boils down to this. Do we want to extend tax, tax breaks and relief for the working people in this country for a year? Or do you want to do it for 60 days and be embroiled in this kind of dispute ongoing? And I think certainly the logical position is to take the former. And President Obama is still in town. I hope he's not going to go on vacation, leaving the American people in a lurch, and that he can join with us in trying to tell Harry Reid to come back to town so we can assure the American people that their taxes are not going to go up for a year. I mean, it's, it's, that's the only difference that is at stake right now. Is it going to be a year or 60 days? It doesn't make any sense for us to do something that no one wants. No one uh, on either side of the aisle or either side of the Capitol. Now, Mr. Kenner, a lot of people would suggest, some privately, some publicly, that it doesn't make much sense to do what you're doing because everyone acknowledges that at some point in the near future, we are going to extend the payroll tax cut because no one, no Republican, no Democrat, wants taxes to go up uh, on middle-class families. Then, then, so why then, why if, the ultimate, if the ultimate result is that we are going to extend this uh, one way or another, why drag out a fight when Congress is already at historical lows in terms of popularity. Well, again, I think where people are frustrated is because they don't see Washington getting anything done. And by saying you just want to extend the tax uh, relief 60 days, who can plan like that? How that we expect the American people to, to try and budget their expenses when they don't know what their tax liability is going to be? And when you have folks who are in the industry, those um, are companies that actually administer payrolls, saying that the plan that Harry Reid passed in the Senate doesn't doesn't even work. So if you've got that, and you have us here ready, willing to work, and we're just a little ways away from the White House where the president sits, why isn't he calling us in? Why doesn't he come join us here to try and make this happen? I mean, we, the, the differences are not very great. As you know, Chris, the so-called pay-fors is where the differences are. That's the only thing we're talking about here, is how do we budget for uh, the added impact to the federal budget of a year-long tax relief for working people. Surely we could see our way clear to finding common ground, and that's why we Republicans are here in town, ready to go to work, ready to forge a compromise so that the American people and the working now, families can have some certainty. Now, Mr. Kenner, let me ask you one thing. If the options, I know in a perfect world you would like a year-long extension of the payroll tax cut. Obviously, Congress does not exist in a perfect world. If the options are, if we get to December 28th, December 29th, and the options are a two-month extension or a failure to extend it all, which, as you and I both know, would raise taxes between a thousand, uh, far more than a thousand, but certainly a thousand dollars or more on people starting January 1st. Are you and the Republican conference prepared to go that route? Uh, Chris, I, I don't even think that is an appropriate question because right now we can solve all of this and make sure the American people get what they deserve, which is some certainty and a year-long uh, re resolution to say their taxes aren't going to go up. You know, you think about why people are frustrated in Washington. It's because we're here. The president's down the street at the White House. 
he's seemingly unwilling to come and join us to say, let's get this thing done. And I've heard him, the only thing that's doable is a 60-day extension. How is that? The only reason why he can say that is because Harry Reid said he's not coming back to town. So we're here. We want to work together. We want to provide for the working people and families of the middle class some certainty to say, your, your taxes aren't going to go up. We've got time before the end of the year. Let's do our work like the American people are having to do. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor of Virginia, thanks for taking the time. Thank you.